In this video, let's take a comparative look at the covered interest rate parity and the uncovered interest rate parity. Let's begin by labeling the two currencies in the currency pair that we'll be working with. From the perspective of an investor, let's say the first currency in our currency pair is labeled as FC. FC meaning foreign currency. The second currency in our currency pair is labeled as DC. DC meaning domestic currency and let's say at this point in time which is time zero our investor can observe the spot exchange rate for this currency pair to be X0. Think of X0 to be the price of one unit of FC expressed or let's say denominated in DC. Okay. At this point in time our investor can also observe the forward price of one unit of FC for a delivery that happens at this future time capital T. Again, this F is expressed in DC. That means forward price of one unit of FC expressed in DC. Okay. This investor wants to invest a certain sum of money which is in DC for this period of time. Okay. A period which ends at this future time capital T. This investor has two investment choices or options in front of him. The first choice is to invest this sum of money in a money market instrument which is denominated in DC and which offers a rate of interest RDC. The second investment choice is to convert this sum of money from DC to FC at this prevailing spot exchange rate X0 invest in a money market instrument which is denominated in FC and an instrument which fetches an interest rate RFC. Okay. Now, since our investor has his local or let's say accounting currency set as DC, at the end of this period for the second investment choice, the investment proceeds which will be in FC at this point in time capital T need to be converted back to DC and this conversion from FC to DC happens at the prevailing spot exchange rate at this time capital T. Let's call it XT. At this point in time, this XT is not known to us, right? It's a random variable at this point in time and by choosing this as the investment option, our investor will be exposed to the risk to the uncertainties associated with this XT. Okay. Now what our investor can do for this particular investment choice is that at this point in time, our investor can enter into a short forward contract on FC so that this conversion from FC to DC can happen at a pre-agreed or let's say locked in forward exchange rate and that's F. Okay. Now, for this situation, the covered interest rate parity tells us that the investor can very well be indifferent between these two investment choices. Okay, with the uncertainty of XT done away with because the investor has entered into a forward contract to lock in this exchange rate, Covered interest rate parity tells that for both of these investment choices, the final amount which we land up with denominated in DC should be the same for both of these investment choices. And hence, the investor can be indifferent between these two. If the final amount in DC for these two investment choices is different, we are inviting arbitrage. Okay. Mathematically, covered interest rate parity tells us that F minus X0 divided by X0 is approximately or let's say very close to the interest rate differential between the two currencies that times the length of this investment period expressed in years. Okay. This means that if out of these two currencies, if let's say FC is the lower yielding currency, that means RFC is lower than RDC, which makes the right hand side positive, then it should be true that F should be greater than X0, 
which means that the lower yielding currency, in this case that's FC, is trading stronger or let's say at a premium in the forward market as compared to the spot market. Okay, this was about the covered interest rate parity which establishes a relationship between F, X0 and the interest rate differential. Okay, now let's move on to uncovered interest rate parity. Please note this that the uncovered interest rate parity is not really about the forward exchange rate. It's about how the spot exchange rate evolves as we move forward in time. Okay, let the situation be the same as what we had here, but with one important change. And that is, in this situation, the investor, when picking the second investment option, does not really try to hedge his exposure to XT. So the investor does not enter into the short forward position. Okay, so in this situation, when the second investment option is picked, the investor is exposed to the uncertainty associated with XT. In this situation, if the uncovered interest rate parity were to hold, then it tells me that the expected value of this XT is set in such a way so that the expected total return coming from this investment choice should exactly be equal to the return coming from this investment choice. Okay, so expected value of this XT is set in such a way so that in an expected sense, the investor becomes indifferent between these two investment choices because both of them, they offer the same expected returns. Okay, mathematically, uncovered interest rate parity can be written like this. The expected value of this XT minus the initial value of, this, of the exchange rate which we start with, that's X0, divided by X0 should be approximately or very close to the interest rate differential between the two currencies that times this period expressed in years. Take a look at the left hand side of this uncovered interest rate parity. It's basically the percentage change in the exchange rate X over this investment period. Verbally speaking, this uncovered interest rate parity is telling me that if, let's say, FC is the lower yielding currency, that means RFC is lower than RDC, which means the right-hand side is positive, it means that the percentage change in X that I should expect over this period of time should be positive. Okay, this tells me that if I were to invest in the lower yielding currency, which is FC, although this currency is giving me a lower rate of return as compared to DC, over this period of time, exchange rates will move in such a way, or let's say are expected to move in such a way, so that the total expected return coming from this investment choice will still match the return coming from this investment choice. Okay, now given that we have the mathematical statements of both of these interest rate parities written side by side, let's do this. Let's very quickly try and figure out what will happen if both of these interest rate parities were to hold true together. Okay, notice that the right hand side of both of these is the same. If both of them were to hold true together, then the left hand sides will also be the same, which means that the expected value of XT will come out to be equal to the forward exchange rate, which we observe as of today. This means that the forward exchange rate observed as of today will become the best guess or the best predictor for the future spot exchange rate at this time, capital T. Okay, now let's do this. Let's take a look at the key assumptions which individually back each of these interest rate parities. For the covered interest rate parity, the key assumption is of no arbitrage, right? In this world, in this situation, we had entered into a forward 
transaction, a forward-based hedge, and we had done away with the uncertainty associated with XT. Okay? In this situation, then, we had arrived at this relationship between F, X0, and the interest rate differential. This is based on principle of no arbitrage. If, in practice, this relationship is not true, it's not valid or followed, then it would amount to an anomaly and arbitragers can very well profit from this anomaly by putting in the suitable trades for this purpose. Okay. Now, coming on to the uncovered interest rate parity, the assumption which backs this interest rate parity is that market, it has enough number of risk neutral investors. Okay, how do we rationalize this assumption? Take a look at this situation again, right? We had said that the uncovered interest rate parity, it sets the expected value of this XT in such a way so that the investor becomes indifferent between these two investment choices in an expected sense. Okay, if this is indeed the expected value of XT, the total expected return from this investment choice becomes equal to the return offered by this investment choice. Now, please remember this, that a risk neutral investor is one who only focuses on expected return and does not focus on the risk of any given investment. And this is exactly what is happening here right? Investors in this world, they very well understand this, that XT is a random variable which will have a distribution of its own and in this world, they are only paying attention to the expected value of XT, right? And the expected value of XT is just one point on that distribution of XT, right? Because investors here are ignoring the risk associated with XT and are still indifferent between these two investment choices because the expected value of XT has been set appropriately, it means that investors in this world are really behaving in a risk neutral way. Okay, and this therefore this is the assumption which underpins the uncovered interest rate parity. Okay, next let's now talk about violations for each of these interest rate parities. Now, the covered interest rate parity, because it is based on no arbitrage, might give us this feeling that there should not be any persistent violations of the covered interest rate parity, because any violations, if at all they were to happen, should be quickly arbitraged away. But in reality, please note this, that violations of the covered interest rate parity can happen and they can persist as well. The reasons for this will be, number one, transaction costs. That means the bid and the ask, the spread between the two can be too wide and hence after taking transaction costs into account, these violations may continue to persist. Because after taking transaction costs into account, it might not be worthwhile for arbitragers to act on any given violation. The second reason why violations can persist is because when I, let's say, as an arbitrager, compare these two money market instruments, then it might be the case in practice that these money market instruments in these two currencies may not be identical when it comes to their risks. They might have very different market liquidity or for that matter credit risks. And therefore, if I as an arbitrager were to long one market instrument, and short the other money market instrument, then risks don't really offset each other. And hence, for the net risk which I am taking as an arbitrager, I might need to have capital in place. Okay? And as an arbitrager, I may be having balance sheet constraints for me to be able to indulge in this arbitrage. Now, let's move on to uncovered interest rate parity. Well, for the uncovered interest rate parity, the assumption underpinning this interest rate parity to begin with is a weak assumption. 
okay it's not a defendable assumption in practice especially because speculators as market participants we know are not truly speaking risk neutral and this is why violations of uncovered interest rate parity do happen and these violations seem to happen a lot more in the short term and in the medium term only in the long term does uncovered interest rate parity serve us well enough okay so in practice we can say this that forward interest rates they are not the best predictors of future spot rates but instead they are poor predictors of the future spot exchange rate okay because uncovered interest rate parity does not really hold okay this video was about a quick comparative look at the covered interest rate parity and the uncovered interest rate parity